So you're thinking of making YouTube videos and you want to know how to get hundreds of thousands of views and a million subscribers in 30 days. Well, sorry people, you've come to the wrong place. I'm new to YouTube too. At the time of this recording, I've uploaded 25 videos so far, gained a whopping 45 subscribers, including my mum, and my best performing videos only had several hundred views. I'm clearly not successful enough to give you all the tips and the tricks to become a YouTube megastar. But because I am new to all of this, just like you, I can definitely tell you what not to do, so hopefully you can learn from a lot of my mistakes. In a nutshell, why don't you let me make shit videos so you don't have to? Let's crack on. Don't exclusively improvise. Now I'm not saying you need to write a full script and it definitely doesn't have to be word for word, but try and storyboard the video in advance so you've got a general idea of what you want to portray to the viewer. Some people write full scripts, some people write bullet points. Personally I do a bit of both and it helps me keep on track and reduces a lot of unnecessary takes and subsequent cutting and editing in post production, which will save you loads of time. If you use a smartphone to record your content, don't use the front facing camera also known as the selfie camera. The main back facing camera records in much higher quality and looks so much better. The downside to this method is that you can't see yourself and you can't check if you're sitting in the frame right or that everything is set up correctly. If this does concern you then I highly recommend you use Skirkpy, which is a phone mirror you can project to your PC, Mac or laptop. I made a video tutorial about Skirkp, so I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to check it out. Alternatively, if you do get serious and have the budget, get yourself a proper camera that has a flip out screen. I recently started using a Sony ZV-1. Lastly, if you are adamant and must use the selfie camera, then just make sure you look at the lens and not the screen. It looks really weird and distracting, like you're reading from a teleprompter or you're stoned. Please don't use the built-in mic on your camera phone because it will sound like dog shit. Worst case scenario, use a cheap lavalier mic. I bought a Boya BY-M1 for £15 on Amazon, I'll put a link down in the description below. These are generally quite good because they capture less room sound as they are closer to the source, i.e. your voice. You could also get a shotgun mic or a condenser mic, but it all depends on the type of content you create and your surroundings as to what microphone will suit you best and the options are vast and fit all sorts of budgets. The following are some samples of what I currently use. This is me using the inbuilt microphone on my OnePlus 5T Android smartphone, and as you can hear, it sounds a bit crap. And this is me using the Sony ZV-1. This is me using the Boya BY-M1 lavalier microphone. And this is me using the Rode NT-1 studio condenser microphone. Don't use the auto white balance function on your camera, you will regret it. In my fifth video, which was about beginner running tips, I forgot to manually lock the white balance on my camera phone and then recorded two hours of talking head footage. It was a nice bright day with lots of natural light coming through the windows, but I didn't realise whilst I was recording that the sun was coming in and out, which meant my camera phone was automatically adjusting the white balance every few minutes. Just look at all of these variances. I was absolutely gutted at the end when I was editing this video. I tried to make the cuts look better in post-production with some colour correction, but the damage had already been done. You definitely live and learn. Even if you do manually set and lock the white balance, just bear in mind your surroundings and if you're using natural light, your footage can potentially go all over the place and look inconsistent when spliced together in post. Don't neglect your lighting setup. In this first clip I look like a drug addict and I haven't slept in a month. I'm using the main light within the room and a small Yulanzi RGB light placed dead centre. Just look at the red in my eyes here, I don't look well at all. Similar setup to clip 1, but I added a portable USB bedside lamp to my right hand side off screen here. Still not great, but at least I don't look sick like before. I exclusively use the Yulanzi RGB light in this clip and it gives a cool effect, but it's still a bit cartoonish and cliche for my liking. And this hair that's sticking out is really annoying me. I literally shot this in my living room using the under counter lighting from my kitchen cabinets and nothing else. I think it looks alright, it looks warm and natural. 
I'm still learning and trying to master lighting and I don't have the space or the budget to have loads of soft boxes and key lights floating everywhere. All I would say is experiment and see what works best for you based on the type of content you create. Don't forget to tidy up your room and make it pretty. Just like I've not done here by leaving my washing out. But I like to try and keep it real man. And we all have dirty pants, let's not pretend otherwise. Don't forget to master your audio levels or you'll end up with comments like this. Now this is quite a technical and in-depth topic, so if you'd like me to record a dedicated video about this, let me know in the comment section below. In the meantime, it's all about LUFS, which stands for Loudness Unit Full Scale, i.e. the maximum level a system can handle. YouTube itself has a maximum level of minus 14. YouTube won't increase the level of your audio, only decrease it. So if you render with your audio levels too high, then YouTube will limit it to stop you bursting people's eardrums. However, if you mix your audio too low, then they won't do anything to boost your signal and having such a low volume in comparison to other people's videos might mean viewers skip over your content. You can see here from two videos I uploaded how significantly different the master volume levels are via the content loudness line, minus 13.6 versus minus 0.6. You can access this detail from the Stats for Nerds section via right clicking on the video by the way. Check out some of your favourite YouTubers and see for yourself what their levels are sitting at. In summary, you want to try and master your audio as close as you can to minus 14 LUFs for your rendered video. You can use compressors and limiters to help you achieve this, but this is a topic for another video. And if you're wondering why I'm in my bathroom with an elastic band around my head, then I guess you need to watch that video to find out. Despite all of these tips, some of my favourite YouTubers have really shoddy videos, but their underlying intention, advice and entertainment they give is superb. You could have the best camera, lighting and editing software in the world, but at the end of the day, you can't polish a turd. Just watch any Transformers movie. I am directly below. Enemy screwed up. I guess what I'm trying to say is you'll always look back in hindsight and think I should have done this or I wish I'd done that but if you're refraining from uploading content because you're waiting to make that perfect video you'll probably never upload anything ever will you? Go on, take the plunge, be bold. Making mistakes is all part of the learning process. If you don't screw up in life how can you develop and grow? Like I said at the start of this video, let me make shit videos so you don't have to. Subscribe to the channel and we can grow together or for your own morbid curiosity. And when I learn something new, you'll be the first to know. Finally, please share in the comments section below any mistakes you've made along the way and we can learn together. Until next time, look after yourselves. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye for now.